Once I told everybody at home I was making hot chocolate, that's why I was like, I had to make it for them too. Right? And of course, they had to be free. So, what is it with me? When are you? He started. So, are we going? Are we on? Yes. We're recording. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you both. All right. Okay, we're opening up the meeting. Uh, December fourteenth is Joe on? Joe is not. He cannot make it. He's stuck at work. Okay. Uh, Audience of citizens, Lisa? Not here. So. Oh. Okay. Well, uh, we'll move on. If she comes, if she we'll come in. Yeah. A couple of minutes. Nice. I have a motion to commence. I think a motion would be approved last week's meeting. Sorry, the meeting's minute. Yeah. Second. I thought it was in your second. Yeah, second. Second. I think it was second. Uh, any discussion, comments? Okay, here is none. All in favor, except for Don. Yes, the Jews of Don. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Steve's not making it tonight. No, Steve can't make it. Consent agenda. These are the changes we talked about last meeting. Um, so Don, I don't know anyone to your hand. You just want to. You're, you're good. What? All it is is the changes we talked about. I just put them into the policy and the words we talked about. Okay. Can I have a motion to I'll accept? A motion to accept the Senate agenda items A, second. A second. Okay. Any discussion questions? Okay, hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Update on the board in the pool. All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I went to the town council meeting based uh, on our discussion in November, um, following our October 12th public meeting. And uh, as you remember, uh, those in attendance, I was out here, uh, but uh, unanimously <laughs> to recommend closing board in the pool. So I went to the council meeting. Um, was an agenda item. Jen was on so and uh, told them that we, you know, unanimously recommend we close the origin to pool. <clears throat> there are a few questions. Um, the second part of our request was to approve a feasibility study that Steve Wood would lead uh, with an outside vendor to uh, identify a better cost estimate to close down the pool in a right way given the environmental areas uh, to change the tennis courts to pickleball courts, put a splash pad in, um, and the building that currently has uh, uh, showers, bathrooms, we still are gonna need bathrooms, but to renovate that. And uh, they were in general agreement. I think I think things are gonna move along. Uh, they did not go, at this meeting to, to agree to close the pool permanently. But what they did say is, uh, Steve, come back in January, give us all the detail of the feasibility study, vendors, you know, here's the quotes, or however he came up with this first house, and you know, here's the vendor that we want to use, uh, all the detail that he needs, so that they can approve that. Because the one thing I did ask is that they approve it now so that Steve can schedule it you know, during the um, and the winter of spring <clears throat> have it so that by the end of the year, we're in a position to give them this report and hopefully be able to use surplus funds from the end of June 30th, 2020, 2024 year, uh, use those surplus funds either in a phased in approach or to complete the project, including putting it in splashback. As if you don't do it now and you wait, 
and you're going to give us 30,000 maybe for the surplus, that means we're, not, we're talking 2026 to get started. So, so they they generally got it and um, hopeful that come January, if their January meeting, uh, and Steve is he's already working on it, he's got the information, Bill will give them that information, they'll approve it. Then he has to go to the Board of Finance to approve the 30000 because it's capital money. And then it will go back uh, to the uh, town council to actually approve spending. It goes back to Board of Finance so that they say, yeah, go ahead. If you want. So, you know, back and forth. so hopefully that will be done. I don't think, as I told Jen, I know Jen you know, might have been disappointed that they didn't act on closing pool, but I think they just want all the costs known. Kind of eliminate any surprises that might come down, and then <clears throat> they acknowledged that they they didn't put up any type of disagreement or anything about those. So I think they just want all that information. Then at the appropriate time, they will act on it. I did clearly state we are not going to open the more in the pool for the upcoming season, two thousand twenty-four, and uh, there was no pushback on that. And, uh, you know, I said, it doesn't really make sense because here we're recommending close down. We want to move forward. And that's our intent. So that, that's where everything was left without each other. Anything to add, Jen? No, I thought you did a great job giving them the facts. And, you know, you pushed them a little bit when needed. And, uh, you were on. I just I watched it yesterday. Yeah, I thought it was, it was good. And they, they did ask a few questions back. It was, yeah. It was yeah, one of the questions it was a good one. How much does it cost to operate the pools? Uh, one of the new town council members, Mark, um, asked that question. And I said, it's roughly, you know, 30,000. I, I know 2022, I remember, uh, I didn't yeah, say yeah, that. Yeah, we gave those. was 35, you know, other yeah. was a little bit less and all that. So I'm just saying 30,000. And he said, oh, so why don't you set 30,000 that you're going to save for the upcoming season? Use that for your feasibility study. I said because there's a process, it's capital dollars, so this is operating fortune. So it was a good question. So at least we all see that it was acknowledged. Is this get added as like an agenda item next town council meeting? Will it or did it? Yeah, will it? yeah, it'll be so when I had told Arosh what you guys had decided at the last commission meeting. I had mentioned that Donna would go to audience of citizens to let them know. And he said, you know what, because of the lengthy conversation it was last time, let's make an agenda item. So Donna and I worked together and created an agenda item for this council. She was actually on the agenda for it. And that'll tell January as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he also actually brought up, <clears throat> and I'm glad he did. I thought it was a good point. You know, the, the more in the Bittner Jr. pool complex is named after the three soldiers that lost their lives, right? And um, he goes, We don't want to lose that name, you know. And I said, Absolutely not. We will. It, I said, I know what the plaques it, it says pool complex right now, so you know, we'll have to change it. Maybe it's something, some other complex. I don't know, but. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely do that. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure that they're acknowledged. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully, you know, in January, and we'll ask Steve to uh, make just send out an email to everybody that he's, he got the approval. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Okay. Parks and Rec, monthly report. I mean, yep, Christmas is done. But <laughs> <laughs> not all my events are done. Put all those reports. Put all the decorations away. Let's go. Let's go on to winter. Yeah. <laughs> well, you work the hours that I worked the last few weeks, and you'll feel the same. <laughs> One week was 47 and a half hours. So you would feel the same way, believe me. But anyway, they were all very successful, in my opinion. It was great. The tents were up. Great numbers. There were, uh, yeah. Uh, it was out here. We had 141 actually finished, 145 registered. We said that's the lowest people, <clears throat> the lowest number of people that did not show. Is that oh, I see. Like 20%. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. Four percent is, I mean, four people overall is unheard of to, you know, to not show. So that was really, really good. Um, the house decorating, the judge, the team will announce the winners. Thank you. Santa was, was great as normal. A lot of new, uh, new people that had to sell was kind of sell. You know, there's so many options out there. Kind of a hard thing to keep going, but we, we did have some insert, so it's good. And we'll, we'll keep it going as long as we can. But people have so many different places and the fire truck and everything else that they can do. It's just kind of But, you know, it was uh, people that came loved it, so we'll just keep it going. Um, basketball started last week. Games went pretty well. It's the um, I had mentioned previously that we partnered with the Peter Guild. Their performance was Sunday. I attended that. I thought it was fantastic. Nutcracker was really great, really cute. And, you know, the audience were just packed with people, so that was nice. And they're going to take a little bit of a break, but we did talk about hopefully future things with them, just because we have the space where they can rehearse and things like that. Is so, that what they used to do something? They did. They use our facility one night for rehearsal. They use the tech with the firehouse, and then they use um, Dan's legacy. With Miss Caroline's place, she is yeah. yeah. retired, but they yeah. use her that studio to also oh, 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 yeah. yeah. And and tying in with us kind of helps them through the board of ed process a little bit because we're a town organization, so they don't have to jump with the hoops. Uh, but they still have to, you know, they just have to pay the fees, which they have. Yeah. That's why they, you know, they charge, but they they have to pay the staff to help run all the sound system, the lighting, everything. But it's well worth it. It was just a really great. Three There's a state grant that uh, that was brought up at the town council yeah. meeting that presents you know, there's more than sixty six hundred for arts and you know, is, are you involved in that at all? Or no. what, what was they gonna didn't know anything about it? I know that Chris Cody, who has um, he was yeah. the one right, so he's the one that was uh, starting uh, theater field again. Yeah, he's been in touch with. Percentage to see that they're not looking to really get a lot, but they just want to be involved because obviously they're already a theater group in town, so right. they want to kind of help to you know broaden the you know, the offerings for people to stay. Yeah. So it's kind of a work in progress. It wasn't really a group as far as I know until this money came, so it'll be interesting to see how they move forward. But I, I think Chris did ask that the uh, the Maybe so I'm sure there's a process where you have to apply to set up the then I'll think it's hopefully you get involved. Um any questions for Deb? No? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. On the last bullet, number five. So you're gonna contact us. Is that how you really do one on that's all my summer staff. All summer staff. Okay, thank you. It's a, I've done that for the last 20 years. Yeah, I just was a staff. Yeah, so everyone gets a, you know, hope your, hope your year is going well, just trying to find out some numbers, who's coming back, who's not coming back. It's always when I get the not really sure. I think I'll, there, there might be a couple who really have aged out, but I'm not really sure because you never know what sure. people's opportunities are. But for the most part, we have a pretty, pretty good group that were like seniors going into the first year of college this year. So I expect it will be okay, but I'm, I am going to look to hire more staff than I probably need because I don't want there to be an issue down the line where we had that gap here and like we have now. Yeah. So we'll, I'll try to incorporate them, incorporate them somehow to get the experience and get the kids in the one that end up when we're short sure. lifeguards, you know, yeah. so. I think if we can kind of change the way that we're going now, we'll be able to train these kids enough to, to be supervisors as they go along. And uh, hopefully get a few more WSIs, which are just instructors. It's always a tough one. Yeah, well, we've done okay so far. So. <laughs> but it's hard just having it. So when it's, when you have it yeah. year round, it's easier to kind of keep people, get more of an interest. Right. You can give them employment longer than we've done. Okay. And one, one of the questions that at a later point in the council meeting, I was asked, um, or a comment was made by the mayor that the uh, 
Meriden and Berlin, we've written why is so much involved with our parks and rec department that does things with them already. And I, I answered no, I believe there was some involvement years and years ago, but on some program, I, I thought it might have been the tinsel. Well, only the tinsel one. That's the only thing. Okay. Yeah. And that yeah, was, but next year is going to be the 40th year of the tinsel one. Wow. Yeah. Um, but that's, since I've been here, it's always, the unwritten rule when I first was hired was uh, that why we ran some programs and we ran some and we tried not to with each other. Yeah. But I think that it just got to the point where we needed to just start offering programs. And you know it's we have to provide for our residents too. And if the residents are are participating in the Y and then they have nothing, that's not really what we're here for. So sure. Yeah. And they don't really offer a lot of programs in town like they used to. They're it's very limited for all right. Right. So, um, but that is the oldest program. Yeah, I mean, they're very involved in child care. Child That's their that. big, yeah. 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 And it's, they do the summer team, which they love with like summer team. Absolutely. But, um, but other than that, um, they, but it's not, we're not working. No, we do not. That's right. That's it's very right. unusual to have how um, park and rec departments work with wives because they're, they both have different classes. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, parks and grounds is. Is there anything? Steve's not here. His monthly report's pretty basic. I did want to point out something we forgot uh, to put on here. Um, if you go to the high school in front of the main office windows, is a new bench that is the oh, okay. Anderson Memorial bench. The plaque is still about six weeks out from that group, but uh, once we get the plaques, they'll give it to Steve and his group will um, install it onto the bench, but the bench is there and that's the Chase Anderson bench. So they were very happy with it. Nothing else. Nothing else. Uh, working at the grant, the Staglio is open. It looks awesome. Uh, it opened right as football finished their season, of course. Um, we were waiting for the substantial completion paperwork, and until we have that paperwork signed by all parties, the liability was still falling on the construction company, which is why we were not able to open the field. We had to make sure that the liability was coming back to the town as the project was quote unquote complete. We still have a couple punch list items we're working on. <clears throat> um, but the field is open. I gave word to the principal so they can start doing gym classes out there if they want. And then we talked last month about, you know, in the spring when we open the field, do like a big opening. Um, first of all, is will be closed until you know spring season starts. But if you walk out there, the sod looks great. It's a little wet because I mean now it's probably frozen, but it was a little wet in the beginning. Steve and I were a little concerned, but we talked to the contractor and the landscape architect, and they're not concerned at all. It was just because it's sod, the roots hadn't you know connected and really formed yet. So that should be an awesome field in the spring too. And and we paved Greg Stars path up to the field that he's been asking for for years. So it's as part of as part of the project. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's great. That's good. Right. Yeah. That's it. It does. It looks fun. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. Um Oh, other news, Berlin Little League has a new president. His name is Brian. Please don't ask me his last name. If you say it, I may know it, but it's not Brian Sub. It's a different Brian. Um, but Steve and I had a Zoom meeting with him, and dare I say, he sounds fantastic to work with. He sounds like he wants to really get the schedule under control and not list every day, all day on every field. He wants to have better, have his people have better communication with Steve on what they need, you know, the Sunday email of what they need for the week, what they need line, where they have games. Um, he really wants to get a handle on everything and make sure communication is a lot more open and a lot better between us. So I'm going to hold out. So give him a chance. I know. <laughs> Should we schedule? I have to hold out hope at some point. Should we schedule a meeting with all the spring teams? I think 
after the holiday, Steve and I have to sit down and we have to decide. We have to have a meeting that involves the AD and the Springfield users to discuss the uses of Biscoglio, especially because when this grant was gone after, it was under the assumption that this would be a great opportunity to give Berlin Youth Soccer a permanent home, a place they can do three practices at once because it is that big. But that means that the high school needs to be off that field at 530, which we know we're going to get pushback from. We've already had it. Um, so I think that's where we need to start and maybe bring maybe bring it into a commission meeting, maybe do a meeting on the side, see how it goes. And if we're not getting the results we want, then bring it to the commission. I think Steve and I have to figure out the best way to go about getting all those people in the room and getting expectations out of the way and see how we can all work together. Berlin New Soccer and Berlin New Lacrosse have worked extremely well together over the next few last few years. We really just need to get Dave and the high school in to do the same thing and hopefully it's split, it's split, right? Yeah. So I already got the email from John, uh, Berlin New Football on hey, where are we practicing next year? And I told John Paul, I'm not even thinking about you until after I get the spring situated. So that's the priority now is finding the schedule to fig figure it out for the spring. So, well, again, yeah, don't hesitate though. I know. Helps, yeah. You know, so, like with the AD and everything. Yeah. It's, I think Steve and I are just kind of putting it off till after the new year and then we'll sit down and be like, all right, because that's usually when I send my email out to field users and I want them to know what their options are. So, we probably want to get a meeting in January. We're just not sure which people we want to have there, which way is going to be the most effective to get the word out, get people in agreement. Um, sage auxiliary, yeah, sage, sage, sage front, yeah, sage front, Hubbard. and then um, we're at um, Willard, Willard, yeah, no, and Willard, and they'll then have Percival back, which yeah, will so, be helpful. In the fall, they didn't have Percival. The, the thing is, though, is that it'll have an extra feel that they don't really have to maintain, which would be important. And plus, for the mini kickers, little kids that are out there. I'm going to have them four and a half years old. Instead of practicing on wet grass, they can, they can do it on the turf, right? You don't have to cancel some games or whatever. Okay. I mean, and I know Dave is going to want to maybe do some JV lacrosse games, and I totally get that. And Berlin New Soccer is willing to work around those games, sure. just like they always have with on Sage Auxiliary when they're in lacrosse games, just like you you lacrosse has always worked around the JV lacrosse game, the varsity lacrosse game. So I think it's just... And still present with us. Yeah. It's a conversation that has to happen. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> um, any pushback, Jen, that you're aware of with, um, on the baseball field where we said, you know, only games are to be played? We haven't told them yet. We were waiting until this was voted on, and then we're going to send the new policy out. Oh, Since okay. we just had the meeting with Burn Little League president, we didn't want to overwhelm him with that news as well. So my plan is to touch base with the Berlin Little League president and as well as um, Rob from American Legion and let him know. Right. My hope is that the two groups will work together to find a way to share both fields, just like they did in the fall. So, or in the summer. What restrictions are we putting on field beyond the high school for spring trials? What do you mean? Well, I'm assuming just like they did that Sage, you know, the, the softball team, baseball team, they go out there for practices or tryouts. Or right, like in March, Little League. Are we goes putting to... any restrictions on that field? Are we going to put tryouts back there? Are we putting restrictions on what they can do on their feet? Those type of things? They have, they have, yeah, it's the same rules as Scalise. They can't wear plates. And <coughs> Dave, Pyrus, and Leo have always known that if they were doing their tryouts on Scalise, they couldn't do it. So that'll be the same rule at Vistadio. Little League also knows that Little League already asked to book Scalise for tryouts in case the fields weren't ready yet in March. Um, so I don't foresee any major yeah, issues. I just wanted to make sure that the same applies on this. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. And the actual sign went up, what's today, Thursday? The new sign went up Wednesday. Tuesday or Wednesday with all the new rules that match the Perfect. rules that still needs to be because it's third field. Perfect. Thank you. So there were actually were kids playing soccer. Oh, um, really? Oh, yeah, it's about good. 
My wife took a lot of them. Were they town kids? My wife is registered. They were not registered. Oh, God. You've been away too long. I've been away. Okay. Um, well, how did it go with the um, scoreboard at the end? I know there were. Yeah, they finally, finally, they finally started to get. Okay, oh, did yeah, it? So yeah. I think I think will just get better at that. But um, yeah, I think the biggest concern is that you know if someone touches the wrong button that had went up there, which happened one day, everything went blank. Okay. So the yeah. the referee had to. Just the clock on the field. There was no clock. There was no scoring. There was nothing. Um, but I, I hopefully um, for graduation, people get really sophisticated on it yeah. because there's so much that we put into it. It was because in the beginning of the season, it really it just became a sport. Clock. That's all it was. Yeah. yeah. But no. So, and at the end of the season, like I was there for a soccer game, and they were showing football highlights. And they couldn't, I don't know who's up there, they couldn't, it was it, I don't think it was on purpose, I think something happened, they were just throwing football eyes. Yeah, yeah, well, well, the highlight reel it's not, was not just football, it was, if you saw the entire thing, yeah. it's really awesome, because it, it brings you into the high school, it shows um, activities within the high school, including, you know, the theater, the yeah. band, yeah. Uh, and then it comes outside where they have different sports, well, so it's, it was really well done. Cool. And uh, but I, I know we probably should say it probably the real just kept going on with it. Yeah. <laughs> but it was it, whoever put that together it was really good. Okay. Um I'll bring you up to date on one other item, but yeah. is there any other items just need or staff please? No, I was just gonna say do you want to update on the community senior center? Right. So uh, being there at the town council meeting on Tuesday, um, when I was preparing during the day, I saw there was agenda item 18. And um, can we make a motion to add yes, to the agenda? Yes, I thought okay. a conversation about the community senior center. Thank uh, you. We're, just, we're looking at it. I'm like, how do we do this? <laughs> so that makes a motion to add to Lisa. Correct. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure if you were coming. You know, we're at, okay. And then let's just finish this and yeah, you can speak. Uh, you're in a second the motion. Second the motion. Okay. All in favor to add. All right. I look to that. All right. Yeah. But at this time, if we could just take a moment and Lisa, yes. I know uh, we're just getting here, but we're into our meeting. So why don't we allow you to speak as audience citizens now, okay? Yeah. yeah. Um, last year. Oh, hang on. Lisa, can you just give us your address? No, we need the address. Two one two that I got it. Go ahead. Sorry. Last year. Unless I know I have a. Do you want to come stand in the middle yeah, so we can all hear you? Just, I'm sorry. Not so, spotlight. Uh, so I brought some pictures and I can pass them around. It was easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, last year, I could show you that it was a success and we raised $7,000 for the first time. He has recently passed away. Yeah. He has been. Um, so last year, I did everything myself. So this year, um, I have a guy who's gonna help me with the finish line and start line and timing and the numbers and stuff. Um, we're gonna try to charge twenty bucks. Okay, okay, so you are charging a fee. Yeah, I'm gonna try because last year was donation and I screwed it all up with the okay. twenty dollars. You said yeah. And, um, Steve Leonard is gonna um donate all the food. And you're selling that or it no, no, it's just for the after the race for the okay. other um, so ALS is gonna be there and then they're gonna sponsor it all over the site. And oh I created I started a flyer but I can't finish it yet because I want the approval first. I know it's very exciting. 
Um, do you know how many people you had last year? We had about uh, 70. And you're looking to get well, more. promote it a little bit more. I don't I can't imagine. Did you have any police show up for the event last year? No police came. We don't have to. I had this guy from town who was kind of rubbish, and he's a big certifier. So he he walked the race pistol creek and he completely like timed it out so that we were all on that side. You know? So we don't we'll start. Right, and it's an outlaw When you look into it, May 18th, Saturday? Yes. Between all of the communities and Mother's Day and. You feel it. Did you have any issues with people uh, walking horses, walking dogs, people out? Because we have a public park, we didn't close it just like we don't close it for crime. No, we encourage them to join the race. Okay. There was no issues with that. Not at all. You know, that'll be something we can do. Yeah, well, okay. It'll be even more, or it was pretty organized, but it will, it will be even more organized. So since you are charging a fee, mm -hmm. we would have to vote on that, and then that would have to go to town council. So you're not going to get approval for the whole thing until the end of January, probably. Um, they started early, but just because the charging of the fee for the town ordinance has to be approved by the commission and the town council. That's fine. I mean, it was it was a fiasco doing the races only. Yes, people do. Yeah. Absolutely. And you're not selling anything on site. I'm not going to sell anything on site. I'm, I'm hoping that I can um, like get people to sponsor us to raise more money, like our local businesses and stuff like that. I, I did create a sponsorship form. So, what's going on? It was great. Actually, I'll just touch on this. So I would do this in terms of the police department. I would do exactly what I did last year. This event is approved by the commission. Last year, I gave them a heads up. I gave them the details of the event. I told them when it was happening. And it was up to them if they chose that they needed to have a police officer on site. I would do the same thing again, as long as the commission agrees with that. I just want you to understand that if they do decide that you're going to need a police officer, you're going to have to pay that cost. Yes. Okay. Now, what did I say? It was really good question. We see it with the chance. You doing a rain day or just rain or shine? I think May is like a good one. I don't know if I can't. Did you figure out this past year? No, no, no. I want to say it. That would be. Some people just think it out. Yeah. Like, you just put some gliders and get the folks who are gated. Yeah. ALS is really, they were really yeah. I'm now on their board. Really? Yes. Yeah. I'm very excited. I'm hoping we're going to figure out how to do a bench for the end up there. Oh, okay. And I'm going to tell you, I gave you all that information. It's, it's a lot to go through, though. So his, um, his daughter is able to run the lemonade stand. Oh, uh, yeah, I've heard about her. So now she's writing a book, but the mayor just gave her a proclamation, which was so cool. They're going to put it in the six. And channel three is coming from house tomorrow. <laughs> I interviewed her. Channel eight already came. It's crazy, but now she's an official sponsor of the Danny Man race. And Danny Man, an official sponsor forever, ALS, for anything they do with the It's so cool. That's really fun. Yeah. Which is ALS local? Yeah, We're trying to keep them alive. Um, ALS is in Milford. Okay. Um, but they recently, all the chapters of ALS split from the mother A of ALS. So now there's like chapters that they're called ALS Alliance. Across but you're going to Milford for like board meetings and stuff? Yeah. I don't know. It starts in January. So you haven't gone yet. I don't know. But um, yeah, they changed their name to ALS Alliance. Okay. So I made their logo. Who's gone? No, I'm glad I just. I'm glad you showed up because we weren't sure if you were coming. Yeah, I mean, we had a huge Facebook following. I'm glad it was a so, Did Dan know about it? He, we got him there. ALS sent an ambulance to pick him up in this huge wheelchair thing and brought him to the races. We did a race. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the commissioners? Or... No. Thank you. No. We'll keep it going. We'll keep it going. We'll keep it going. Time. It's good. You put all your profits back into ALS? Yeah, well, and also to help Dan. Oh, yeah. They had all kinds of gadgets for having wheelchair. Things to finish his eye. 
in the end, he didn't die of ALS, even though he died. Really? Oh, that's awful. Okay, so then we should wait till January to put on the agenda. You could choose to add it to the agenda now if you're in agreement. What are we are we calling it in ALS like so? To, to grant permission, we have to grant permission to someone to charge a fee. Are we granting permission to you? Do you guys have a group? Is it like the Dan the Man group? Is it ALS? Like what do you do? It's, it's now all of the funds will go to ALS. Dan's and you're here. representing ALS as a board member. Exactly. And they're going to be there. Okay. Yeah. So I would say request permission for ALS Alliance, you said, mm -hmm. to charge a fee for their 5K run walk. Yeah. You get that? Okay, you got that? Who wants to somebody got the for agenda item ALS Alliance for 5K run walk and to charge a fee. Oh. Sorry. I was gonna say, how does it work if we wanted to make a scholarship? Because then we could hold like that in ALS and put it in some sort of like that I don't know. That would be a board event conversation. We don't do well, um, so, but in the meantime, we'll keep it as is. Yeah, <coughs> that might be something you do after the event with Board of Ed. Exactly, wait a bus. So, okay, did you capture what I was saying? Yeah, request permission oh. for ALS Alliance, right? Five day run walk <laughs> to charge a fee. Charge a fee to put it up. The use of this for a And if it helps, oh, and we don't have to charge a fee, then we don't. No, if that helps you, then that, that's yeah. it. Second the motion. Okay, thank you. Let's yeah. keep. Let's, yeah. let's, can, let's have a side on it. Okay, any discussion, comments? On favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> so I will get it. Geared up for a January council meeting to touch base with you once it goes through that council meeting. And then you can officially publicize and everything. And I'll let the meeting now. Do I need to attend that? Thank you very much for coming. Happy holidays. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. Thank you very much. My, my sister was supposed to come, but if she shows up, we'll figure out. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so we added, we did add the other motion so that we can discuss the community center that's been going on. Okay. Yeah, so to just give you an update. So uh, Tuesday night, um, they had agenda item 18, which was to the council, the mayor and the council wanted to, wants to request our commission, as, as well as the Commission on the Aging, to revise our statement of need for the previous proposed community and senior center that worked on back in 2021, um, in which another committee was established and presented a report to the council on telling us to look so that he gets it. It's, it's actually referred to in your book, you'll see it. Uh, in April of 2022, the subcommittee made up of council members. I was on it. Mishnah Aging Rep was on it. A couple of other people um, had a report that was submitted to council April 22 on the proposed community and senior center. They had hired an architect. Jen was our liaison. Uh, a lot of good work was done on it. Um, the council didn't do anything with it. In July of 22, they... Uh, <laughs> talked about it at the council meeting. I think uh, Brendan Luddy, who was a council member at the time, he was our chairperson. He actually, three months after the report was submitted, presented the report in summary fashion. And then it sat. They didn't act on it. They didn't do anything with it. Um, uh, there was discussion at that point in time you know, about the cost. It was fairly high, $1,250 million, $755 million. Um, and the, I, I think the general thought by the 
council, majority council was, you know, too expensive. You know, there was also discussion as part of this to maybe bring the Y into town and have them run an, a Y facility. Uh, and maybe the town would have to contribute land or whatever, however that would work. Um, and I think, uh, you know, it, it, the perception was that the majority of the council really probably in favor of the Y just because of taxes, right? Not increase taxes to, to build a building, operate this building, blah, blah, blah. It's too big anyway, so part of that. So, uh, so now <clears throat> the mayor had a meeting um, right before the election in November at the senior center where he, and there were, I was not there, but there are other people maybe presenting, and he talked about the community center, you were there, uh, the community center and uh, senior center, um, and uh, also the lot, the two options. And uh, and I, from, from what I was told at the council meeting Tuesday night, um, the mayor indicated that, you know, there was a a lot of residents that were there that really wanted him to pursue the senior center, but at a reduced size, bring down the cost. Uh, and then on the other hand, there were others that wanted to pursue the Y option. And uh, so thereby maybe eliminate or really minimize any cost to the town for that option. And um, so now, obviously they're in place, they had the meeting Tuesday night. So they asked us to now revise our statement of need for the first option. Town funded community senior center, but let's focus on reducing the size of the facility. Um, so I spoke, um, I wasn't going to spoke, speak, but I read the agenda item and I was concerned about how they wrote it up. They're, <clears throat> they're hiring a new architect. They're not gonna use the same architect that was used in the past. In the past, we had, it's, it's, a, you know, it's a beautiful Taj Mahal. They thought, you know, the, the best of the best community and senior center, but there was a design, there was a layout, there's detailed costs. Um, there was a lot of work done by the previous architect who also, did a lot of community and senior centers in the state of Connecticut. He's well known. Our commissioners have met on the past. Um, and uh, so for this exercise, they've decided that they would hire a different architect, pay him $30,000. And the way it was written in the agenda item, that that architect was to work with us on our statement in need and the Commission on Aging statement in need to understand and come up with the estimated cost for a smaller facility. Eliminate some of the things that maybe we decided were needs before, but maybe aren't now. So have this architect come up with an estimated cost. And then the way it was written uh, that they would use that said architect to also work on the why option. Uh, but I guess the council will had that up. So, so I, when I read that, I was concerned about using a new architect who the reality is has to come up to speed and probably use for easy $30,000 just to come up to speed. And then secondly, knowing the history of being involved, <clears throat> I don't know really what they want in the sense of what is, I asked what is the goal? Um, the mayor said that he would like to bring this to referendum, both options to, somehow to referendum, I guess this year. And he's asked us to complete our project very, very quickly. You know, he said, we can get that, right? So I said, well, anything's possible, but I don't think so. Yeah, I, I, you know, I mean, respectfully, it's just, there's a lot of work. And we visited a lot of sites around the state this subcommittee um, learned a lot, a lot of lessons learned. Um, some of the staff also attended. And I said, would we need to go back to those facilities? You know, it's two years later. Maybe there's some changes that they would even incorporate now that didn't think about two years ago. 
I'd like to understand the operation financially, how they're doing compared to what they told us two years ago. You know, that's all important to understand staffing and the programs level. So that has to be done. Um, in addition, I said, I will, we'll do one statement of need, combined statement of need with Parks Rec and Education on Age. Why? Because it's one facility. And, <clears throat> you know, maybe we should have done that before. But let's combine, because one of the comments that has been made is that, oh, there's a lot of duplicate requirements. You know, maybe we have this room for Parks and Rec, and we have this room for seniors. That isn't the case. What was built was one room, senior uses it during the day, and he uses it at night or what else. But um, that comment was made. So for that reason, I think, just combine it, it's not no big deal, it's one side. And uh, and as far as doing it quickly, again, I, you know, we'll, we'll work as quickly as we can, but we're gonna do it right. And- uh, you yes, use your other architect? To ask you to use the other architect? Yes, I, I said I don't understand why. He was pretty adamant about not using yeah. it. He was adamant about it at the forum at the senior center. Um, some choice words. The session, and, yeah. I didn't get the sense of there were a senior center meeting that with that many people would really want to provide. Okay. Yeah. So, we're still going to explore it. We can't stop it. <laughs> right. And it, it, you know, feel free to go on the video uh, if you want to look at it. There, I think there are a couple of you know, comments that I made that, um, you know, he pushed back, I pushed back. You know, in the end, we got we're going to do it. We're going to do it right. And um, as I mentioned to Jen, I said, you know, after after the first one here, this is just a suggestion. I'd like to get your thoughts and everything. But um, if <clears throat> I was in, I think of all of us, I was the most involved in this. I'd like to sit down with Jen and Tina, the chair of Commission on Aging, uh, perhaps, to let us just scope out. What we think we can do. We're gonna we're gonna just blend in the two statements and create one, which was the base, and then we'll go forward. Um, and then we'll scope out what we think we need to do and how quickly we think we can get it done. I'll go from there, and then we'll bring it back to you January, February, whatever. But we'll probably have to start working on it anyway. You know, sometime in January. So. Um, as far as reducing the size of the facility. And not knowing, you know, <clears throat> you know, one of the comments that I made is, um, is that you know, my sense is that maybe the majority of the council would want to go for the one. Why don't you just do it? I said we're wasting a lot of people's time, um, the commissioner's time, staff's time. I said staff will be very involved in this because I'm going to want programs. Because we're going to have to support what we do. Because the fear that I have that if ever this should go forward, I'm not sure. But if it would, then <clears throat> I want to make sure we can support why we need this room. Because if this cost estimate that's done, you know, for a very small amount of money, is similar to what they did at the high school. Remember the first round of the high school? They did a square foot processed and they went to the town and they did a referendum based on just square foot, not, not detail. <laughs> and costs, when, once they start getting the plans and everything together, costs went so high. They had to go back for another referendum. And I do believe, I could be wrong, but I think there was even second or you know, third referendum with the final costs that they had to go back to. Every time they did that, they had to go back and cut, 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 cut from what they originally wanted because the cost went up. That would be my fear with this. If we're going to reduce the size. I want to make sure we reduce the size to what we really believe we can live with and, and that the residents you know, would want and that we fill it. We have activities going. We have the right staff in place to do those activities. Otherwise, it's a wasted space. But I don't because I don't want to cut again, you know, and and then let them if they've selected the architect, let them live with that cost issue. But that's I don't and not we would make that clear. Um, I did talk to the Public Building Commission. 
chair who was there at the meeting along with Michael Hearn, director of engineering, because usually they would be the ones to get involved. They're the ones that hired Tom R. Carey, who's the previous uh, architect. And, uh, you know, they, I think they were, at least the chairperson of a building was somewhat surprised at this approach. They're not going to be involved in it. They definitely will not. So, so it's, you know, I did ask the council to, um, why don't you do this? Why don't you just tell me how much you're willing to spend? And then we'll work with your architect and tell you what you're going to get for it. And he said, no. So, um, so none of that makes any sense. No. Oh. You're going to put up two things, two representatives. One's going to cost $30 million, the other's going to cost $5 million. Right. 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 It's like stacking the deck, but he wants people to decide. Right. 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 So, this, Wait, the five million ones are live? Anything less than what we have now. Yeah. You know, personally, it pulls the stay in it. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's really a map. So you're going to basically downsize it to a pool ball. Right. Yeah. Which is all those again. Affordable classrooms outside. Now, to that extent, to, to that point, I will tell you that um, Charlie Vanessa, one of the uh, town councilors, said, you know, now, when you talk about closed into parts, into pool, you brought up, you know, we only run the outdoor pools 50 days a year. And um, tough to get staff. The other towns that we compare ourselves to have indoor, one indoor pool, at least one indoor pool, town funding, and, uh, and one outdoor pool. I said Cromwell's an exception. They don't have any pools. But um, anyway, Charles Vanessa picked up on that in, in, in his second discussion. And he said, you know, why... Why don't we kind of think outside the box and why don't we do a dome that would be indoor or outdoor? Because long term planning, you're going to have the same issue with person. And he said, and I said, I totally agree 100%. I agree. Previous to the meeting, someone else spoke to me privately about that saying, it's, it's a great idea. I mean, I don't know how, you know, how much it costs or anything like that, but. We do have to think about personal. That's really have a lot of maintenance at some point. We only use it 50 days a year. They, this is so maybe that's one of the changes that we incorporate in this. Um, Cheshire has a dual indoor outdoor pool. And I think, I don't know, do you know, do you know anybody in Parks and Rec in Cheshire? Is that his call back down there? I think John took that general. I feel like. They had issues with that dome. They, 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 it's, it's it's up. They got a they got a big program. I looked it up. They, they recently it? just dropped it. I don't know if it's like I, yeah. I, the one you know the one down off the day before that's privately. That's, yeah, that's that's right. I don't know what this dome, but it, they recently shelled out like a good four or five hundred thousand dollars on that pool for something. I can't remember what it was, but I remember seeing it on the floor. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I don't would, think it's outdoor. I think the dome is there. 24 7. I think it, it's it, always it could, there, so. it could yeah. be because it, it it looks like a hard dog. Yeah. And the picture is not something that you can move, you know. But but that that's what they that's what it appears Cheshire does. They don't have an outdoor pool. That's their pool. And like it's from six in the morning to 8 45. Yeah. It's like four, and four, and four, for a resident pool. And that's for the year. Yeah. 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 So yeah. in any event, my point is though, that's a visit that we need to make. And, and I think that was the Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very new thing. Yeah. I, I think I, I was very pleased that he brought that up. I think that was, you know, so. So what does that mean? Like closed first floor? No, no, no. I think he's thinking maybe this this piece of piece of it makes sense uh, in long term planning because, you know, you, you run personal. And then it, he said, and then you put the operating costs for. Or didn't pool with this and the capital dollars, which we of course included before, put that towards cost of the construction. Now, again, that's if it's town funded or, or a complex, but um, if it's a lie, it's not our money and you don't know, use it 24 7 as, uh, as a town. You know, it's a lot. So, but I, the concept is a good one. I think that's part of that's a good change to consider. You know, 
Um, I've already reached out to the high school, to the athletic director and, and um, coaches to update any requirements for changes for a lap pool for the swim teams. That was part of our requirements so that we'll have that I asked if they could return in January 15th. That should be mentioned. And I brought up the dome pool because I want to make sure that would work. I you know, can't imagine it would. Um, what else? Let's see. Um, one statement I need. Oh, I asked for a timeline. I said, so as soon as possible, if anyone. And um, well, let, let's, let's say, okay. I told Tommy, I said, Arosh, can you tell your, your architect, give him my number and tell him to give me a call. We'll get started right when he calls me. When I took from that meeting, they have to hire. There's an architect on call list. She got it. Yeah. Comes in and you. They, they actually yeah. agree to a new job. Are they the only yeah. ones? That's the one that they're most likely. Right. Well, to 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 and you. Oh, the one that they did not use. That's what TBC works with. They did not use it. Yeah. They've they done a lot of projects. Yeah, I don't. That's not right very well. Yeah, yeah, that's most likely. And Al's a good. It's easy. Yeah. But you ain't going to get a lot for 30 years. Uh, and they are using the grant for there's more monies in the grant. Yeah, I thought the 30 grant figure was kind of odd that they just put a tab on that. Everything's 30 grand. Run a pool is 30 grand. <laughs> I was thinking about that. Uh, we're going there. Right. 300,000. <laughs> but uh, so the words that were used in this agenda item. Uh, let's see. Okay, to start. To start the process of reviewing additional community center alternatives, particularly to reduce project costs, staff proposes the council authorize the manager to enter a contract with an architect from the town's on call list to assist the Parks and Rec Commission, Commission on Age. In addition, the selected architect can assist with evaluating project scenarios for a partnership with Meredith Berlin and Great Fly and project phasing alternatives. Cost will not exceed thirty thousand. Taken for the grant. How much money is left in the grant? About five hundred. Five hundred thousand. Exactly. Five hundred thousand. But you know, maybe that goes to whatever option select. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are. I I did uh, make a point also to let them know that I I do have. Um, the utmost respect for John Bedigny, who runs the water program, because he, he was straight to our subcommittee um, when we had a meeting. And um, I'm the one that asked the question. We submitted written questions to him, but I'm the one that uh, gave that question. And I said, can you need our statement of needs, our correct and senior student? He said, no, I cannot. So, uh, I mentioned that to the council. I said, he does not replace your senior center. He does not replace your parks rec department. He uh, has his own mission. They do, I'm not gonna say anything negative because they do a good job. He also said he was concerned about saturation because we have the Meriden, the Britain, there's Plainville Y, which is run by the Hartford Y uh, organization. Southington, you know, and Cheshire shares in that. With the Southington one, he was concerned about saturation, and he talked to us about having to go to his national office in order even to get approval to do a study, uh, which co all costs money, by the way. Why, why, why has to raise money for this building and all that? And the mayor said to me, he never said, I said, he did say it's in our minutes. If you read if the report, it, yeah. it's there. Yeah. So, and I did tell the new commission members, you know, or council members. It would be helpful if you take a look at our report, read it, go through all the detail attachments because some things just didn't make it on report. So there's a lot to catch up on, uh, but I think after the holidays, if that's okay with you guys, just sit down with them, put a game plan together, and then we'll go from there. And I just a suggestion, you gotta think about it. And we have a couple of members of our commission, a couple of members of the commission on aging. Those people go out, go through the visits, 
to the sites uh, with the staff, then uh, you know they're kind of our representatives, so that they come back. So not everybody can be there, and you know it's just one of those things. But I know the time less. is for the other group, and it's you know it's going to be that, but compressed. So getting back, getting back to the industry, but I think someone said what. It, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter that question's been asked and they want to explore the why option and they're they're going to explore it it's, he said that he's going to have the why come and do a presentation at one of the council meetings at some point so it's it's and, 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 and he so. told in the meeting at the council he said donna it will not be up to me or the council to make the decision. It's always up to the residents to make the decision. So I think he wants to cover both options for that reason. The other thing that I haven't done it, but I am gonna mail um, the mayor Roche and South Board Narrow Director of Finance or on the Board of Finance. And um, honestly, really go to referendum, I don't know how you do it, but this year especially there's early voting. In the state of Connecticut, that starts this year, and I know our registrars' votings are scrambling to try and get everything set up for November. We have federal election. There's a lot going on, so I don't know how you squeeze this in on a referendum. And the finance department has to get very involved with uh, bonding documents. They're going to go with both options. We had to get our work done in December for them even to think about putting it in a referendum in April. So that was before, and there was detailed plans. There was a there's a whole video on the whole thing. There's there's architect plans. This will have none of that. So so my suggestion, I'm gonna email and say you know just think about this. Do a mailing rather than a referendum. Put both options. Mail it to the taxpayers. Let them respond. Whoever responds, yeah, you You know, don't spend the money. Don't spend the money. It's a waste. So. <laughs> Um, I didn't say that at the council meeting, but I think I think that's that's a way to do it. Thank you. But I will tell you though, you know, we, we need to do the right thing. And for the residents, you know, make sure that we come up with a good statement that we are uh, very comfortable. Right. That's it. Any other questions? Anything else? It's referred to in your plan of conservation development. It's one of the things that it's called. Make a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.